going on, Imperials? Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon are just around the corner. We're about to be overrun with Sensory Overload for a brand new pair of Pokemon Adventures. There have been a plethora of trailers recently, and they'll probably squeeze a few more before the games come out. Some of the trailers have had awesome new bombshells, and others have fizzled out with disappointment. So, I thought I would share what I think are some of the last minute pros and cons for Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Con number four, utter lack of Alolan forms. Regional variants were an amazing new feature introduced in Gen 7. It's a staple of the Alola region's culture, and made random older Pokemon actually useful again. So I find it a shame that we're so close to the release of these games, and there has been no indication that we're getting any sort of expansion on such a unique part of the experience in Alola. I don't think it's outlandish to want this, or even expect it, since we got a ton of extra Megas in Oros. So, I would think that this similar but better feature should get equal treatment. Now, this is obviously not confirmed. It could be proven wrong an hour from now if they put out a new trailer. That's why it's so low. But, they're being so tight-lipped about it up until this point has me concerned for what I hope doesn't turn into another missed opportunity. Pro number four, confirmed story differences. Story differences is something that I wanted for these games from the get-go, and something more than just the different legendary Pokémon at the end of the game. The trailers we've seen so far have had one amazing cinematic after the next, and many of them were definitely not seen in the originals. Even though these are separate stories, like your classic Crystal or Emerald, these are proving to be substantially diverging plotlines, similar to the Gen 5 sequels. Mina is shown to have an actual trial now instead of merely handing over a crystal. Our friends Lily and Hao look different too. Lily appears in her Z-powered form from the very beginning. This could mean that she's more confident from the beginning of the game, or it may even be that she's an actual Pokémon trainer this time. They seem to have made a concerted effort to portray Hao as a more competent rival. He looks committed to actually challenging battles, as opposed to his unfailingly cringe-worthy habit of laughing off every single defeat. These changes, and many more we'll discuss later on, are sure to make the game a wholly unique experience. Con number three, Totem Stickers. Now, this isn't a big thing, and it probably won't be a very big part of the game, but apparently, you can collect these things in random spots around the region, and eventually, if you get enough, you can have certain ones of your Pokémon become totem-sized. This whole premise is highly questionable to me. First of all, how do a bunch of stickers combining make them totem Pokémon? Is that how the wild totems got that way? Wait, why can't I just catch the wild ones when I'm forced to fight them in the first place? If you're going to let me have totem Pokémon, you don't need to come up with this contrived method of doing it. Especially since it looks like the only ones that this applies to are the ones that already had totem sprites in the first place. Just let me throw one quick ball and be done with it. And who made these stickers anyway? The captains? Or the kahunas? Or was it the tapus? Are they some kind of magic? And why did they put them in such random spots all over the islands? It's just kind of a big mess, and I doubt I'll even use them in my game. Pro number three. Ultra Space! We thought we went to Ultra Space last time, and we did. Kind of. Saying we've been to Ultra Space is like saying that you've been to Mexico because you went to Taco Bell that one time. The trailers for these games did show the same cave that we went to last time, but that is just one of many possible locations that make up Ultra Space. These are in fact doors to unique dimensions that house all sorts of different Ultra Beasts. The diversity here is reminiscent of the kinds of worlds that you would find in a Mario game. I will be extremely interested to see if there's anything else inhabiting these areas aside from the Ultra Beasts, or if there used to be, and the Ultra Beasts have since eliminated them all. We also get to use Ultra Space as a means to encounter all of the past legendary Pokémon. Is this a rehash of the Hoopa Wormholes from Oros? Absolutely. Do I mind? Eh, not really. We've got to get them in there somehow. Riding the mascot legendary through Ultra Space is even sort of like soaring through the multiverse. The only potential downside I can see is that this likely telegraphs the end of the current generation, since they always cram in everything they can at the very end. So while I kind of hope that's not the case, 
it does look rather ominous. Ultimately, Ultra Space looks like an incredible opportunity to explore all sorts of interesting areas and dimensions in space. A whole new world. A dazzling place I never... Oh, copyright infringement from Disney. I know that sounded familiar. Con number two, Mantine Surf. First of all, I know it's under some contention, but the official pronunciation is Mantine. It's a combination of manta ray and marine. I don't much like it either, but that's how it is. Now that that's out of the way, there's a new Pokeride feature featuring the player riding on a Mantine. I'm hopeful that this means that we'll be getting other new Pokeride options as well, but we'll focus on this for right now. The purpose of riding the kite Pokemon in the water is to go from one island to the next. This is an interesting concept to be sure, and I'm sure I'll do it at least once, but that looks about as fun as this feature is going to be. Sure, you can do flips and tricks and barrel rolls to get extra points, but how long does this go on? I'd imagine at least a minute or two to get all the way to another island. Nobody's going to volunteer to consistently use this over flying, or even ticking the boat seems like it'd be faster. My one hope for this being redeemable is that there are some kind of smaller islands that can only be accessed this way, or useful items and maybe unique Pokémon. Otherwise, this will remain a tedious and extremely forgettable addition to the Pokeride stable. Pro number two, Team Rainbow Rocket. This one is quite the bombshell. Apparently, Team Rocket is back with a vengeance. And not only them, but all the leaders of every past team is in on this somehow. This is some serious Legion of Doom level collusion going on here. This certainly ramps up their previously underrepresented promise of saying that everything comes together. While this seems incredibly exciting, I'm also somewhat hesitant. Not that it won't be fun, but how exactly did Team Rocket get all the way out here to Alola? And how did they amass so much power? Also, what does this mean for Team Skull and the Aether Foundation? It actually looks like they've taken over Aether Paradise. And are they called Rainbow Rocket just because the project was called Pokemon Rainbow? Hmm, let's see. Ah, this just in! Apparently, the evil team leaders are from dimensions where they have achieved their goals. That's an incredibly interesting story point. We've certainly never been to any of those universes, since every game I've ever played, the evil teams are defeated. Okay, scrap the hesitation. Despite the unanswered questions about Alola's native teams, this sounds pretty cool. Hopefully it will also add to the replay value of these older games for a long time to come. Con number one, the Ultra Recon Squad. Just like the last one was questionable, this likewise may turn out to be a very positive aspect of the game, but right now, I just don't get it. As I just said, Alola already had two distinct teams in the region. Did we really need a third? Except these folks aren't from Alola exactly. They come from another region of Ultra Space, a world where it said Necrozma has stolen the light. That explains why they're so pale, but doesn't explain what they're doing here. Are they here to steal our light? Do they want to defeat Necrozma? Are they good or bad? I'm sure all of these will be answered in the game, but then why bother showing us a new aspect of the story if you're not going to explain it at all? How am I supposed to get excited when I don't know what to think? These people scream nefarious, and if they try and work with us, then absolutely nobody will be surprised by their sudden but inevitable betrayal. Especially since we just had a high-tech double-crossing organization last time, so we're all prepared. Are there more than just these four guys? Let's see, we got Spanish Candy, Zosi Longstockings over here, don't forget FICO credit score in the end, and can somebody please tell me why the one called Solaria is in Moon version? Furthermore, they all come from Tron, I mean, uh, Ultra Megalopolis. This is a huge city, almost like Coruscant or the Citadel, but despite this, I am highly doubtful that we will meet any other people, much less be allowed to travel anywhere besides the narrow corridor allotted to us in this giant cityscape, which is ludicrous. I hope I'm wrong, but it looks to me like their eyes were once again too big for their execution, 
because the Ultra Recon Squad and their home just seem a bit over the top. Pro number one, new Ultra Beasts. There's a lot of new stuff around, but this is unprecedented. Brand new species of Pokemon in a game in the same generation? And it's not just new forms, we're talking brand new Pokemon in another game. New Ultra Beasts. This has never been done before. New Pokemon are for the first games in a new generation, everybody knows that. Burst is a literal clown. Assembly is alright, but it already reminded me of a Lego Bastiodon even before they revealed the typing. But Adhesive looks great. It looks a lot more like a standard mythical Pokemon than an Ultra Beast. This addition to the game has the potential to open the floodgates for many new kinds of Pokemon. Or, at the very least, hopefully some new Alolan variants. It seems unlikely at this point, but at least we're one step closer than ever before, because these new Ultra Beasts, to me, spell out the most exciting news in the world of Pokemon in a long time. So, those are my last minute pros and cons for Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Which parts of the games have caught your interest? Let me know down in the comments. Also be sure to leave a like, share this video, and subscribe so that you too can become an Imperial today. And we'll see you around next time!